Next up, we speak to uh, Shirley Fisk and uh, Tony Oliver-Smith as they launch the AAA's Climate Change Task Force. So first of all, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. We really appreciate that, so thank you very much. So the uh, AAA has, uh, has uh, decided to implement a, a task force on uh, climate change. So tell us a little bit about, about why that is. That's a good question. We, uh, this bubbled up from the membership of the AAA from the uh, concerns that anthropology and anthropologists felt about um, seeing all the effects of climate change in the field, I think, and seeing what's happening in Tuvalu, seeing what's happening in the Arctic, um, and not have, having a feeling of being able to have a voice or having a, a way to connect with other people uh, that are anthropologists. That's one thing. And the other thing is we don't have a way to connect with outside the public in general or the public media. And so we wanted to have a task force to look into the issue, see how broad and difficult it is, and then do those things. That is to have, have a wider visibility with the media, have a wider visibility with, um, with the public in general, public education. And so that's really what the task force is all about. So when people think about climate change, they think about science or they, they, they think about economics, but, but why anthropology? Um, anthropology really is the profession and the discipline that really has the breadth of understanding of human nature and experience to be able to talk about what it means to people and see it globally. So number one, the archaeological and paleoarchaeological, the, the record on evolution, um, and then our contemporary uh, you know, anthropologists there in uh, the Amazon or wherever are, are lots of data points out there that we can put towards understanding what's happening to people in a real-time basis. Tony, let's pick up on that, uh, understanding what's uh, happening to, 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 to people. Tell us a little bit about your work and, and the effect on communities of climate change. Well, I've been working for a long time on the issue of natural hazards and disasters and there is a there is a, a, a close connection uh, between um, certain hazards, climate-based hazards, and disasters and climate change now. And um, the issue that I've been working with primarily is uh, the issue of displacement, uprooting, uh, resettlement. And uh, the, we're, that's very much uh, an issue that is uh, sort of controversial right now as to how people are going to be displaced. Um, I think as we move forward in time, we're going to see climate change uh, play a, a, a much more prominent role in the displacement of people. Uh, there are also a lot of trends that, that uh, are taking place in the world today that put people at risk. There is a huge global, uh, global coastward migration uh, at the same time that we're seeing sea level rise. And so we see these, these uh, factors come into play with each other and my work uh, deals a lot with the, the interface of, of local communities and policymakers. Um, I've been writing policy briefs now uh, for the United Nations University, the Institute for Environment and Human Security on, uh, on displacement, on migration, uh, on loss and damage uh, and particularly non-economic loss and damage. Today, in, in the sort of the Western or global economic world, we measure things economically, but there are going to be lots of losses in displacement that are not of an economic nature. And so how do you measure this? How do you calculate it? How do you, how do you help to deal with people who have been uprooted and lost fundamental elements that uh, are part of the bedrock of their culture? Do you think policy makers listen? Uh, well, uh, there's a policy brief right now that uh, a colleague and I have written in Warsaw that it was distributed to the delegates on non-economic loss and damage, and we hope they pay attention to it. I think in general it is hard. Uh, anthropologists feel that they don't necessarily get our, our voice, our opinions out there into the policy stream as well as we could, and I think that's one of the other reasons for establishing the task force, is to try to make recommendations on how we can do a better job at that. Well, thank you both very much indeed for joining us. There is no more important issue, is there? So uh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.